I, as you're talking, I, I'm thinking of the examples of my life. My dad wanted to start a Bible college, and um, yeah. I had a brand new car. I just bought it. It, it, it ran 3,000 miles on the clock, and it was an Austin 1800. You don't get Austin mm -hmm. 1800s in America. If you Google one, you'll see what it looked like. It was petrol yep. blue. The registration number was HAV304E. I'm not bitter or anything, but I can remember the registration number. And my dad walked in one night to our house, our kitchen in Scotland, and he said to me, I says, hey, where you been, Dad? And he says, oh, I've been talking to Jesus. And I says, oh, really? What did Jesus say? And he didn't laugh. He says, well, what Jesus told me was, we're not moving to America because we were on the point of moving to West Palm Beach, Florida. A church there had asked us oh. to join their team. And he says, we're not moving to West Palm Beach. We're staying in Scotland. I says, we're staying in Scotland? He says, yep. He says, and you see those stables over there? I says, yeah. He says, we're going to start a Bible school there for young folk to come wow. and, and be trained. I says, when are we starting this thing? And he smiled. He says, we're starting it tonight. I says, um, what do you want to do? Because my dad and I had a deal. He got the vision and I got the job. That was pretty much the thing. He was the visionary. I love that. And so yeah. I says, when are, when are we starting? He says, we're starting right now. I says, what do you mean? This is nine o'clock at night in Scotland. He says, you see your new car? I says, yeah. He says, we're selling it. Oh, and we're man. going to take that money and we're going to start changing the stables that it, it wow. was a writing school when we bought it, and there was a, a coach house that, that was the office. And uh, he said, we're going to start using the money from your car to start ch changing the, the stables into a place for folk to, young folk to come. I said, hold, right. hold, hold, hold on a second. Didn't Jesus just talk to you outside? He says, aye, he did. I said, well, why are you selling my car? And he looked at me and he said, my boy. And whenever my dad used to call me my boy, there was a lesson coming down the pike whether oh, I liked sure. it or not. And he says, well, my boy, it's like this. I've been watching you and that card is the most important thing you possess. Wow. And if God can't get that out of your hand, right. he'll never be able to use you. Wow. And I looked at him with a sick feeling in the pit of my stomach. And I said, well, I guess that makes it pretty plain. Two days later, wow. I've never sold anything so fast in my life. A farmer came, <laughs> didn't drive the car, didn't just wrote a check on the on the roof of the car, passed it under my nose to my dad. My dad passed oh, the papers course. under my nose to him, and out of the driveway drove 304 H H A V 304 E. I didn't know it, Aaron. I had passed a test that was so big yep. that God yep. could trust me with things. And get it yep. out of my hand. And I know watching just now, Aaron, I know this. That there are people that are struggling yep. and you're thinking, my God, yep. what, why am I in this, this desert place? This, the, yep. this tumble dryer that I'm going round and yep. round and I'm getting beaten up. And Let me tell you something. If you pass this test, yes. this is thus saith the Lord to you right now. If you pass this test, then God is going to find you faithful. To give you something that is worthy. And there is. Absolutely. Everybody wants that testimony. But very few want the test to get there. Oh, and um, I, I found. So I did a study on the children of Israel. And the distance between. You know where they left to. In Egypt. To actually to. to you know the promised land in Jerusalem. And, and, and it shouldn't have taken 40 years. No. But it took 40 years, and yeah. really for two reasons. I think we stay in our wilderness. We stay in there. Um, I think the wilderness was necessary. They had to go through it, but they didn't have to go through it for 40 years. No. So there's some people, you've stayed in it longer than you should because maybe you, first one is just disobedience. God told them to do stuff and they didn't do it. Disobedience keeps us longer than we ever, than we needed to stay. And the other one is simply, they just weren't developed. They hadn't learned the lessons God wanted them to learn. And so in those seasons where I feel like I'm in a, a wilderness or a tough time, I'm asking myself, you know, first of all, I, I know this is necessary, but is there some kind of lesson that I'm, I'm supposed to learn? Because yeah. I want to learn the lesson and get on. Or is there some kind of disobedience that I'm living Because yeah. there's there are certain things that God has told us to do in those seasons that we just weren't 
willing to do. And he knows that until we walk in that obedience, I think your car example is a great example. Like till I'm obedient to turn over what I need to turn over, God can't give us what's next. Absolutely. And I know all those seasons that I've held my hand like this going, okay, I finally got it. And I know God tells me to give it up. And I'm like, oh, I, I remember one time, I'll give one short story that one time I was preaching um, at, a, at, at another church. So when you go and speak at other churches, they give you an honorary and they, you know, they try to bless your family. So I knew I had some financial needs in my life, some things that Katie and I were believing for. So, I mean, I'm a planner, I'm a budgeter. So I knew, okay, this honorarium is probably going to be between this amount and this amount. It's going to help, you know, eventually solve this, this, this thing that we have coming oh, up in our life. Coming. I've, I've lived this. Yeah. I know. We, so I go and I preach for this church yeah. while in multiple services, the pastor's on stage, the second service. And as he's talking, the Lord tells me and said, give him your honorarium. And I said, Lord, I did not hear you correctly. I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm in worship. I'm not hearing you. So me and him got me and the pastor got to lunch afterwards and he hands me the honorarium. And normally you, you put it in an envelope. It's all, you don't even see it. This one, it was a, just a check open. You could check. see it. it double the amount of what I thought it would be. So, and I knew what God said. I knew what he told me to do. And I was yeah. so frustrated. I was like, God, this is a test because not only is it, is it, is he hand me the check? He hand me the check and it was double the amount. So I flip it over and I flip it over and I sign the back of the check and I hand it to the guy. And I said, the Lord told me to give this to you, not to the church, to you personally, bless your family, help your family through it. And the Lord's challenge for me is when I drove home that day, I was so, so frustrated going, God, that could have helped so much. And he asked me, he said, Aaron, could that have solved your problem? And I said, no. He goes, if it can't solve it, sow it. Ooh. And instead of you trying to solve it on your own, sow it. And what you did is you sowed it. And when you sow it, you'll reap it way better than you, you thought you could solve it. Oh, and it was, it, it had to have been eight to 10 days later that um, a family member uh, on my wife's side decided she would not wait any longer to hand down her inheritance to my wife. And instead decided to do it while she's still alive and wrote us a check that was way bigger than anything we could ever imagine. It solved the problem. And I truly believe that it was God's way of telling me, Aaron, if you'll learn the art of releasing what's in your hand, yes. I'll, I'll, I'll show you how I can release what's in my hand. And what's in my hand is always better than what's in your hand. That was a big life lesson for me during that time. Some